What's going on everyone, my name is Bankrupt and welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play series. It's episode 1, check that out, isn't that cool? And let's signify this very special occasion by taking a stroll down the red carpet and uh, just checking out this lovely structure, which I will probably never improve on. But here we are, episode 1, and today, holy moly, that's a lot of endermen. Let's ignore that. Episode 1 is going to be a little bit of a world tour. You'll notice that we started in a pre-existing world. I've been playing on this one for about a month. and I don't want to look over there. I've been playing on this world for about a month. And um, yeah, we have only just started to record. So today's episode is going to be a quick world tour so that we can get on with the regular show without missing a thing. I want you guys to know everything that's going on here. So let's get into that. And there's no better place to start a world tour than with the very first thing that we built in the world. This is my starting house. It's taken a bit of inspiration from Super Mario. It's a nice, cozy little castle looking design here with enough room for a bed, a crafting table, a couple chests and furnaces. Really all you need for the start of the game. Not while I'm recording, zombie. Come on. All right, now if we keep going to the right from the storage room and down this set of stairs, sorry, not from the storage room, we're going to the storage room. And this is it here, we have 40 double chests worth of items. And you know, honestly, I don't think that's enough for all the items in the game. We had to kind of like combine a lot of different sets of items together, which I'm not too happy about. But so far, it's served us pretty well. It's always good to have a spot where we can keep all the items that we currently have. And it was a nice little design exercise too, getting to work with the shroom lights for the first time, working with layered flooring and skylights on the roofs. I'm quite happy with how it turned out, but like I said, in terms of function, I think we need to upgrade the storage quite soon. And speaking of upgrading storage, this is the current project in the world. It's a storage silo room, and it's basically for all our bulk items. Things like dirt, things like wood and stone will all be housed in this building. And once it's complete, I hope it will look more grand than anything else I've built in this world. It's certainly much bigger, but it's basically a hopper system. I'm probably going to do some work on this later this episode, so I won't go into too much detail on it right now. And with the storage room there, if we pan around past the intro set, we're going to get to this nice little stone bridge. Now this was a bit of a design challenge for me, building a bridge on a diagonal axis. And I really... Please, I'm trying to record, go away. I really wanted it to be um, curved at the bottom, which I think we achieved quite well. And these nice big stone pillars, it makes it look really secure. And I can't wait until we expand this river so we can actually drive boats under here because I think the best view of the bridge is from this angle. And uh, currently, as we walk over it, we don't really get to see that. Okay, and let's go over the bridge this time instead of under it. And we're going to make our way... Please don't hurt me, Enderman. Oh, God! I didn't look at you! Jesus. All right, with that little scare aside, we're gonna go on into the desert village now. And ideally in the future, I'd like to make a nice grand entrance. So as I tour this lovely little village, I'd like you guys to think about a nice name for the village. I'd like to include that on a signpost at the start. So leave it in comments below. This is the villager trading outpost basically. And I have been slowly creating new buildings for this place. But essentially we started with the well and then I started to build all these houses around with a similar theme. The sandstone, the birch wood. I'm pretty happy with how it's going so far, but there's still a lot of progress to be made. I don't know how this guy got out. Hmm. There's meant to be uh, pretty secure walls around here, but it looks like a creeper got in as well. Okay. Really not sure what's going on here. This is a project that I'm probably going to revisit multiple times over the course of this series. We really do need to fill in some areas and actually level up these villages as well. And we can't leave the village without talking about this pyramid. It was the first thing that we built in this desert area, and it has a beautiful purpose as well. Check this enchanting room out. It's got the lovely gold accent blocks. It's level 30 as well with all these bookshelves. And you know what? I think it just looks really nice inside. We've got the little moats, and I think 
maybe if the creeper didn't kill him, look, it's our little fish. Funny story behind these fish, I accidentally uh, traded for about 30 buckets of fish from one of my villagers, and um, yeah, I just thought it would be funny to put one in there. I also just want to point out that this village was actually inspired by that randomly generated sand structure there. Without it, I wouldn't have really had the idea to put a pyramid here, and then everything just took off after that. So, shout out to Minecraft Generation, you've done well there. And that's basically it for the world tour. There are a couple of other things around the place. First of all, we've got this horse farm here, which we're trying to collect one of every type of horse and donkey. We've also got a few other inhabitants on this server. This is Zinclair's house. This is a dark oak themed little tree house. I think it looks really nice inside. I love the leaves falling from the ceiling. And um, she's still working on it. It's a work in progress. Great for a starter house, a lot more grand than mine. And over this direction, we have Harrison's house. Harrison is my little brother. And he is currently working on some castle looking structures and storage room. I'm not sure if he'll ever get around to finishing that, but that is basically it for the world tour. So stay tuned, we're going to work a bit on the silo room today, so we'll get right into that now. Alrighty guys, the storage silo room is finally complete. I gotta say, when you're working with symmetry, things become very tedious, but without further ado, let's get inside this place. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I was dreading finishing this project when you saw it at the start of this episode, but I think the hard work has paid off. We are missing one block, however. There is currently a piston that I don't have a slime block for, so... When we activate this door, if I just put some placeholders in there, yeah, it doesn't uh, work properly, but that's okay. We'll find that slime ball at some point in the future. And there we go, the first lamp for the storage room has come on. We've completely filled the bottom chest. I took the trusty donkey out for a spin and uh, brought back a bunch of sand for a future project, but that is so cool to finally see it working. Alright, so now that we know it works, let's check out the back room here so I can show you how the system is functioning. So at the top, we've got the barrel. That's at the top floor where we deposit the blocks. It will then go down into this hopper chest system and it will basically just keep funneling down to the next available slot. So you can see that this chest is full, this hopper is full, this hopper is full. So the next block we put up in that barrel will end up in this chest. And you can see that there's some sand in here. And because this chest has blocks in it, this comparator is being powered and it will send a signal to this lapis block here, which then sends the signal to this uh, redstone lamp there. So the reason why we don't have a lamp connected to the bottom chest is because if it only had one block in it, then the lamp would get powered. And I wanted to signify a lamp means a full double chest of items and in fact we've got a full double chest plus two hoppers so when the lamp's on we have tons of sand at our disposal that we can access and 
there is a lamp connected to each of these as well. So we'll be able to tell basically how much sand we have until we have way too much and all the lamps are on. All right, and just to see how this works as well, let's access our chest down the bottom here. Let's just say we want some sand. We can take this out. And yeah, you'll see that it starts to fill up from those hoppers at the back there and from the chest, it all starts to funnel down. So we can just have easy access. And then next time when we want more sand, this chest is filling up and ready to go again. And I also took the time to complete all the item frames down here. You'll notice that we are missing a spot here for jungle wood. And we also have one plank spot, which I'm not sure what block will go there. But we've got glass, we've got terracotta, we've got soul sand, basalt, netherrack, so on and so on. All the stuff down there. And we've got all the frames up here as well. Now, I think they would have looked really nice behind each of these glass panes. But for functionality's sake, I think having it out, like sticking out in the open like this is good. Because as we're running past, we can kind of see, oh, okay, wood's here. Take a quick pit stop and then we run down to cobblestone and do that. So I think having them sticking out is the way to go, even though it would have looked nicer there. But that is it for episode one. And what do you guys think of the room? You can uh, leave your feedback in the comments below. I would love to know if you have any suggestions on the item frame positioning or just the general design choices. I think there's a lot to be improved, even though the building is complete. And uh, while you're there, maybe leave a comment for the desert village as well. I would love to have a name for that organized by next episode. But that's it for episode one, guys. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of this episode. Please, if you enjoyed it, drop me a like. And if you could, maybe subscribe as well so you don't miss episode two. But until next time, this is Bankrupt Out. Thanks for watching.